Hello and welcome back to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiersma and today we have another care collab for you guys. I'm really really happy that I was uh, asked to join in on this one. Um, this one is organized by uh, Attainable Green, Jess. So Jess, thank you so much for emailing me and uh, uh, to ask me uh, to join in on this care collab. Uh, um, I'm really happy to do that. Um, first of all, I like the care collab, so I'm, I'm really happy to join in in, in all of them. Uh, if I have the orchid, and if um, yeah, I'd like to to share my information. Uh, if you are following my channel and you follow my care collabs, you can see that some care collabs are uh, longer, some are a bit sh shorter. Uh, that's just basically because if I don't have the orchid that much. I do not um, am that experienced with them, so therefore I cannot talk about uh, the care uh, as much as with other ones. Uh, because you probably saw, for example, uh, the care collab uh, about the cyberpetaliums, and that was a pretty long one. Today, this one is, uh, I think, going to be a bit longer as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. I, I just try to talk about as much as I can, and especially with these guys. I had a lot of trouble and I must admit I I killed orchids in my life, I think we do all, but uh, most of them were Miltoniopsis. I just couldn't get them to grow. I just tried everything. I, th I Yeah, I tried to read every book about them and tried to find so much information uh, of them online and they had a certain care guide that um, yeah, basically the same sort of points came out of there uh, that you um, yeah have to keep in mind how to grow them well. Um, I have to adjust them a little bit. That's not I don't want to say that the care guides on uh, out there are not good. And I'm I'm talking a few years back. And nowadays on YouTube, for example, uh, Jess herself is growing Miltoniopsis very well. Good information, but. Uh, back in the day, it's kind of hard and um, uh, kind of hard to interpret the what the the care guide, the the of the, the care woman uh, behind the uh, the growing behind the article is is uh, trying to tell you. But uh, nowadays, like I said, it's getting better. And I will point out the points where uh, I did uh, uh, get um, basically for my care a little bit wrong information, and I had to find it out on my on my own on myself. Uh, but that's the beauty. That's how we learn. So I, I'm happy that I uh, that I learned uh, at least how to rebloom them because I'm lucky enough at this moment when we started these uh, care collapse, making these care collapse, that a lot of my Miltoniopsis are in bloom, and that is that's beautiful, of course. And I'm really happy that I can share them. And if I don't. Uh, uh, keep it in mind, I'm showing them all the time because I love them so much and I, I don't want to have an overkill, that's basically what I'm trying to say. But I'm really happy with the scapula because it's all about the Miltoniopsis and I can just uh, talk about it, about them as much as I can, no, not much uh, about the care. Because, uh, believe it or not, I uh, tried growing them for years and this is the first year, I'm not kidding, this is the first year that I, uh, I think it was back in February, so not that long ago, that I had my first rebloom on a Miltoniopsis. And I probably did something right this time because they all started to bloom, they all started uh, growing roots and that's the first. You have to have a healthy plant with uh, beautiful roots or at least uh, healthy roots that work to, uh, so they can support their flower spikes. And I have multiple spikes, and uh, we will have closer ups uh, well, uh, while I am talking. I thought that would be a nice um, a, a way of filming and talking about them, so we can have closer ups of the orchids. Because uh, yeah, I really would love to share and to show, uh, yeah, to share my information and to show the plants and those beautiful uh, blooms up close. Because I think this is the chance. And if you are as me, I try to absorb every information on the Miltoniopsis to, to try to understand what they need and, and more important, what did what I did wrong. And uh, so therefore I uh, yeah, like to uh, point that out while we are having a look at the blooms. And the other participants for this care collab are 
Hello plant lovers, G's Argus, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Then we have DLQ, Attainable Green, Mad by Nature, Rogers Argus and Anovega Gia. Those are the ones who also are giving their care collapse for us today. So I'm starting off with uh, with the uh, showstopper of the day, I think. This one uh, has four spikes, two bulbs. Each of those bulbs have uh, two spikes and they just fully opened. The first one, two spikes um, were are now out for a few weeks. So I was lucky that they still are there. Well, the other uh, two spikes did uh, completely develop as well. So we have this beautiful... Um, Yes, showy way of, of a lot of blooms and a beautiful uh, way to uh, share um, yeah, information about the uh, Miltoniopsis while we are having a nice look at the blooms and I will zoom in and out during um, my talk about them and just uh, yeah, start um, uh, with a I think of quite a very important uh, subject for these guys and that is light, light levels. That is something that I also uh, read about a lot about uh, on the internet uh, when I did my research for uh, research for them, and what I found was uh, basically in every single article about them uh, that they did talk about that they these guys do like uh, lower light levels, almost uh, shade. Yeah, that's that. Even though if I say it. Uh, we will in interpere, uh, interpere that uh, differently because we are people and we may think that we know what the uh, writer was uh, yeah, basically writing about but what is shade? We have all, uh, all, we all have an idea about shade, we all have an idea about lower lights but that is something it will, it's, it's still hard to explain and what is intermediate and when we have, when, when do we talk about highlight etc. But I will try to explain it how I uh, what I learned so far. So I I have them um, since November last year. I did uh, 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 yeah start growing my orchids in my greenhouse. But before that, I did grow them indoors in the house. So I have a north facing window, something you will read uh, a lot about if you are looking up care. Uh, guides for these uh, Miltoniopsis as well. Northern facing windows are very uh, suited for them. So I did and I will show you later on an orchid that I can probably see what, what happened. Still it has some marks because what did happen was that well first of all I didn't get them to rebloom but I must admit I had a hard time to get them to root as well. So that's kind of going hand in hand. Sometimes they may start blooming even though the orchid is not doing well just to try to survive but they didn't that uh, didn't that I'm sorry they didn't do that for me um, but yeah they didn't uh, flower they did grow but it were flumsy growths the leaves weren't strong enough they have uh, normally and I will go make, do my camera a little bit above so we can see a little bit more the leaves but they need to have quite sturdy leaves yes I can bend them but if I let go of them they need to go back and you can see how they move that is is quite sturdy they need to be strong thin leaves but strong enough to be nicely uh, facing upwards um, that is the first and they need to, to have a quite a thick yeah thickness uh, beautiful length and thickness uh, to them and uh, what I did get was thin leaves and uh, bending over leaves that kind of stuff um, so I thought yeah they don't uh, do have roots so probably that is the problem and I did try and try and try and I keep failing uh, failing at it I had one uh, LED light I will talk about that uh, more in this video but I had one LED light above them so I thought yeah they do not need much light so uh, let's uh, try it uh, like this but um, basically the only thing that did happen that was that some of my Miltonias died quite quickly 
Some did try, try, try and give up. So I was very sad and at some point I thought I'm going to give up with them. I don't know how they do it but it will not work. And then um, I saw some videos from Brad Arkets and Miss Arkett Girl and they had them in Spectrum Moss. Uh, I did grow them in bark before but uh, and also I started um, to mix up some ceramics but it didn't really work and I didn't grow them self-watering uh, back then I should mention that but I did start growing them self-watering uh, in moss and bark um, not the best idea but I saw a lot of uh, beautiful roots uh, on YouTube when they had a Miltoniopsis and they grew them in sphagnum moss so I thought I need to try that it did go better they start to root they start to grow better but still not bloom and then I thought, okay, I came across Cintiq and I was trying out Cintiq, pumice, and I thought that should be a good mixture, so I don't have to repot as often. So then I started to um, introduce that to my growing method. So I did uh, bought a few new Miltoniopsis and I started uh, putting them up in pumice and in Cintiq. And while I was doing the, that, I also was learning and learning about uh, self-watering. And uh, it did go better. I saw roots growing, so I thought, yes, okay, this is uh, something um, that, uh, this, that probably are, uh, is going to work. But um, they didn't bloom. And, uh, but I, uh, I saw them getting bigger, bigger bulbs. Uh, um, and beautiful, uh, uh, yeah, beautiful leaves, stronger leaves, and so that was a. Uh, it did did go better, but still the leaves weren't uh, really like I would. I still had that harmonica shaped uh, uh, leaves and uh, leaves that were getting stronger, but in the end of the leaves were still bending over. They just they needed something more, and now I'm coming back to the light. This was very important, so he did. To get a little bit of the journey I was on, so therefore I talked about uh, the media, etc. A little bit. Now I'm going back to the light because then I it was last year November, I think. I uh, like I said, I started. Uh, I had my greenhouse; it was finished, and I put them in the greenhouse, and I saw so much different differences in 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 growing, but also the the color. I did get back that beautiful green grayish color. They weren't dark, so but that's what they always say. If you get give them too less light, too low light, they will start going dark. But they didn't. They didn't go dark. They were green, not that grayish green, but they were green. So I, I thought I, I I'm, I'm doing it right. I give them enough light that they because they don't start to uh, darken up. Well, I did. Meanwhile, I did get the system. I, I started to know what I needed to do. Uh, how, uh, uh, yeah, getting the self watering system working for myself. They did get more light, and it didn't take that long. Well, actually, November, so for Miltoniopsis, it was uh, eventually that February uh, they started bloom. But they take a little while when they when you see a flower spike. It, it, it takes a little while for them to develop. They are not very quick, not incredibly slow. I have some uh, slower ones, but they need their time. So, yeah, I hope that's helpful. But anyhow, it didn't uh, take long and I saw the first spike and I was so, so happy. And then it didn't take long and I saw another spike on another Miltoniopsis and another spike on another Miltoniopsis, etc, etc. Seriously, guys, that was how it uh, was going and by then I just knew they needed more light than in at least in my case I can only speak from my own experience but they need a bit more light than generally is spoken about when you talk about Miltoniopsis. I, I, I was a little bit mistaken because of the color they always say if an orchid is too dark uh, it probably at least that was my interpretation they start to darken up but that never happened for me so that was I thought yeah that was why I thought I uh, gave them an, enough light but basically they didn't get enough light and 
so I started to have the roots, I started to have the, the light and et voila, I have blooms and I have a lot of spikes. Like this one for example. I bought it in bloom, I really really love the blooms and I still do it. I think this is one of the, yeah I love them all. But this one is very beautiful because I like, it's almost like a, a broken heart, I'm sorry, a broken heart in, inside that bloom. So like it's a bleeding heart almost. That sounds not not so fun. I'm sorry, but I think it's. I'm looking at it as a piece of art because this is beautiful, right? I, I really really love it. But anyhow, so I uh, started getting uh, getting spikes and blooms, and this spike has five blooms. That one has three on them, and so they did start to make uh, quite good spikes. If I uh, if you ask me. Um, because when they are blooming but they are not very happy they probably make one or two blooms maybe three but that's it but if they start making four five six or even seven or even more yeah then it's it's a healthy uh, plant uh, as long as they can support it and you uh, your uh, bulbs do not shrivel um, so that's that's that was one of the first and probably one of the most important things that I've learned that they do not need shade, they need light but really filtered light and as you saw in the start of this video I have them growing in my, my orchid room growing under uh, lights um, artificial light and it's uh, LED cool light but in the afternoon around five o'clock I think something uh, around there uh, and in summer it will uh, go down to eight o'clock in the evening they will get some filtered daylight in because that was something I uh, did read quite often as well they can take morning sun or afternoon sun well in my case there was one of them they that did get a little bit of sunshine and it was sometimes on a spike and I noticed even up, yeah, probably up to 10 o'clock in the morning, but not, not longer than that. So just very beautiful morning sun and they start to shrivel quite quickly. Especially when you are from spring going into summer where the sun is starting to get stronger and stronger. I had trouble. So I stopped giving them direct sunshine. Not even in the morning, not uh, even in the, in the afternoon or evening. Just filtered light. But quite a lot of light. I have the bulbs, the, those LEDs, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, um, close to the leaves. I try to give them as much light, uh, artificial as I can, and I think they really like it. But they don't like sunshine. So that was a very uh, yeah, big subject, but I really want to cover that because it uh, had so much influences on how I uh, grow my Miltoniopsis. So therefore I uh, took a little bit time to, uh, to discuss the light levels. And the next, next uh, subject that I want to talk about are temperatures and humidity. Humidity I uh, will put in with this same subject because they are very close related. Uh, for example, I mean, if it's a very hard day, hot day, a hard day, no, a hot day, a warm day, uh, your humidity is probably quite low. So therefore, I think those two go hand in hand. Also, something I uh, grow my, uh, as you probably can see, I will lower the camera a little bit. I grow mine um, in self-watering pots, and I will show you the inside of the pots later on in this video. But just to give you a little bit of the idea if you didn't already have but I grow mine Miltoniopsis self-watering with inorganic media like I said in the uh, beginning uh, the temperatures are basically basically the same that you will find uh, on the internet and that is uh, they love it not too warm and not extreme cold but in my care they get it uh, at night uh, around 8 18 degrees sometimes in winter if I cannot keep it warm enough it will go down to 70 and on occasion maybe 16 but I really hate it because they are standing in water and when you have them standing in water cold water uh, that's not a good option so you need to, to keep an eye on the temperature as well in this case so I, I like them uh, at night around 18 to 20 degrees during the day from 20 to 25 I found that the, the, the sweet spot they really like it but sometimes um, 
I'm from the Netherlands, but sometimes we have beautiful weather here. It's not always happening. At the moment it's uh, very dull days, but anyhow, we uh, get those days where it gets very warm. And very warm, uh, in our case, is around 30 to sometimes going up to 35 degrees. That's outside. But you can imagine, if the sun is shining and my uh, greenhouse and orchid room are facing... Uh, yeah, basically, e yeah, east, south, and west. That sounds a little bit simple, but it's it's a long, yeah, long shaped building basically. So I get from uh, ten o'clock in the morning to about eight, nine o'clock in the afternoon, all the sun that there is on my greenhouse and on my orchid room. But luckily, we have some trees. But um, they they filter it a light a little bit, but. When it's warm, that's basically what I'm trying to say. It's really warm inside of here, so I re need to work with that. This summer it's not extreme in the Netherlands, so I don't didn't experience those extreme weathers uh, like you have for some several weeks that heat. So I can still cope with it uh, by having the green door uh, greenhouse door open, and I have my big fan in there, and I let it blow on speed. Uh, cool air from outside inside the greenhouse. I have an airco in the orchid room, so therefore I have these guys in this orchid room. Also, they do not need uh, all the sunshine, that, that very bright light, but also I can keep an eye a little bit, I can more control the temperature in here because of that airco. I didn't use it yet because I it can get very expensive, but um, if I really, really have to, I can probably keep it around 28 degrees in here, something like that, on those very extreme, extreme warm days, I think. But that's something I didn't experience yet, but I think I'm very confident that it will, will, uh, will work out uh, pretty well. So yeah, I do agree with the sweet spot temperature-wise, but I also have to say that um, because of the warmer days, like I said, probably your humidity, especially in, in, in house, will uh, go down, and they like it quite humid. Uh, I prefer uh, a, a, a 60 to 65 percent humidity during the day and night. I don't change that, but I, uh, that's, that's my uh, sweet spot. If I have it uh, really higher than that, I will have some molding going on uh, in the pot sometimes. I even have a lot, quite a lot of airflow going on, but it still will happen a little bit. After uh, when it's uh, going um, a little bit downwards, the humidity, the mold is uh, gone very quickly. Luckily, because I have a good airflow going on here. That's, that is something uh, they like as well as the other orchids. I think it's very important, especially when you grow them in, in water culture. Same in water culture, you need that airflow because of the mold and the, and the yeah, basically because of the mold. That's the first uh, thing that might happen quite quickly. But what I found was that they can take up with a bit lower humidity, um, not for incredibly long, but let's say for a few days, around 40% uh, percent humidity, I think. So that's normally would be listed too low, you will get that harmonica shaped leaves, flowers that are not lasting as long, um, roots that are a little bit above the pot, let me show it, there you will have some roots there. Those are quite high, but let's say they would be close to the media, they will uh, probably dry up, no, ex yeah, I'm pretty sure that in most cases those roots will dry up uh, very quickly if you have it too low, um, underneath 16% if you ask me, community wise. So that is what I um, what I like for them. But what I noticed is um, that I now have them growing in self-watering, and they have come all the time access to that reservoir there, that they can come yeah um, yeah how can I call it sort of com compete basically with the low humidity. They they um, it's easier for them to keep those uh, leaves hydrated because they have constantly access, access to that reservoir. The roots are used to this system, so they are always wet and they know how to work with that. Um, thereby, I could get away with uh, less humidity if I want it. So that was for me a big plus. But you still see, this is uh, from when I uh, 
you know, when I stir, first started to grow some harmonica shaped leaves. Not that much, but a little bit. I, on top of my head, I don't remember what was going wrong there, but maybe I did forget uh, to fill the reservoir or something like that. But as you can see, most of the other leaves, let me see, I think they are pretty, uh, pretty okay. We have some older leaves there in the middle. You will see some spots there, but that is to be expected and nothing to worry about. And maybe you noticed already, but I'm lucky, you guys, because this one, there's my finger. Here's my camera, there. <laughs> we have a spike, another spike there, and another one there. Just wanted to show that to you guys, because uh, that's another bulb. This one has two growing directions. So I will... Uh, have some beautiful blooms in the future as well again from this one but yeah that's uh, you can see the leaves are quite good if you ask me i'm very happy uh, how they are growing uh, so that means that they, this one is happy with the immunity uh, around uh, around it and basically i found that it's easier to cope with that in self-watering and there is another beauty but i will zoom out a little bit so you Hopefully you can see it, that's, let's put my hand aside it, N uh, next to it, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see that these blooms are quite smaller than the other ones. And um, that is also something I'm going to go in a little bit further in the humidity and then uh, we will stop because I also find that a lot of people, when you post it on Facebook and you say, oh, look at the leaves, the harmonica leaves, how, what I'm doing wrong, etc. One of the first response will be that it's too low, the humidity is too low, they like it wetter, etc. Yes, I agree. I definitely agree with it. But I must admit, I th it's, the, it's, uh, it's on the same level. That is one uh, very important factor, but there's another one. And that is forgotten too often, if you uh, ask me. And that is that the orchid needs to have a good root system and it sounds so obvious i know but a lot of times people always say that the humidity is too low and that is is the problem so if you um yeah getting that up you're getting more humidity around the orchid that will solve the problem and that's half of the problem the other half is something you sh really should know because these guys are repotted by, by myself obviously so I now know, I have a general idea what is going on in the pot. And that's why I grabbed this one. Because now I know when I'm in a store, um, if the blooms are quite smaller than normally, because most of the Miltoniopsis and especially the hybrids have quite big, big uh, flowers. That's a first indication that is something is wrong in your pot. The other a very obvious indication is when you wiggle uh, the pot a little bit and your arca goes uh, all over the place. It's a little bit extreme, but you can see a lot of movement there, even though you move the pot just slightly and the arca is going like this, something, something like that. Um, that is also an indication that there is something wrong with those roots. Most of the times, not always, I recently did a repot, and I, if I don't forget, I will link it with two vendors, but there was one Miltonia opposite. that was the absolute best Miltonia I ever bought root-wise. It had a fantastic root system, but that doesn't happen that much. All of the other ones, and I bought a lot, all of the other ones, in my case, had a few good roots, then I was happy, but most of them were not good let's put it like that there was a lot of happening a lot of happening there and if you ask me most of the times they are standing in too old media those plants are growing on for probably two three or even four years be before they start to bloom then they are sold off and most of the times like uh, you see a lot of with uh, with the phenoliopsis for example you have this uh, seedling basket on it the phenoliopsis most of the times can take it much better but this also this trait is happening with the Miltoniopsis as well but these guys do not take it very well so what i do is when i have a new orchid a new Miltoniopsis i'm talking about specifically but i like to do it with all my orchids but i get them out of the pot as soon as i can so as soon as i see something going in the direction of a growing um, 
a rhythm I always call it but if they go into a growing habit again so they start out making new roots like this one does and on the back we have new growth you cannot see it now but those are signs that this one is starting to um, yeah, get in the growing cycle again that's a beautiful opportunity to take it out of the pot to clean it because there is, a, if, if you ask me, that is 9 out of 10 times what a Miltoniopsis needs. Um, that's my experience. I can, it, it is what it is. The most of the times, and, and yeah, also 9 out of 10 times, these have bush snails or something in, in the pots. And that's bad. You don't want snails in your uh, growing area. So my tip... It's really hard, but as soon as you can, try to start to repot them. Have a look inside of the pot, because you then can also adjust, for example, feeding levels. These guys do not need much feed, in my, uh, in my opinion. But if they don't have roots, you, pro you shouldn't feed them at all, because they do nothing with the feed. The feed is only there to be in their way for the new roots. Too much salt, they really hate it. They really hate it. So that's my big advice. If you have a new one, if you see the opportunity, take it out of that pot. And I did uh, wait for this one to use because also they, not always, but they have a tendency to climb uh, or to have a very strange growing habit like this one. I don't know. I didn't notice, but I don't know what this one was thinking. You can see it was... Uh, where's my, my uh, camera here? It was beautiful growing upright and then suddenly whoppa, we're going uh, completely hor hor horizontal uh, <laughs> with that new growth. Uh, yeah, I did let it grow like this because I really was afraid because that back then when this one started I never had it to rebloom so I any Miltonia up so I thought oh I don't want to mess this up I just leave it like this and we will see. Well, okay, the orchids Apparently happy enough because it has a beautiful, beautiful spike. This one has even seven uh, blooms on it, and they are quite funny, uh, funny colored. We have some some dots in there. There's a lot of happening. It's almost like a uh, piece of art again. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought yeah, I'm going to leave it. I was too afraid to adjust it. I probably nowadays I would try to adjust it to let it grow upwards a little bit more, but I didn't. So I have now to cope with this. Uh, incredibly strange and um, kind of in a, in, in, um, inconvenient uh, growth but uh, anyhow and shaped plant but that's something they can do as well um, I am looking for if I have a very good example of one that is really climbing I, I probably have I will uh, grab one who's climbing and I will show you how I deal with that so, and she is back, <laughs> but we will now have a look uh, a more uh, about the plant, about the bulbs itself. Whoops, I'm going to go this way. And I hope you, yeah, I think you can see it, that uh, this older bulb is quite low in the pot. Then we have this bulb there, I don't hope my face is in the way. This one there, that was a newer growth. Um, one of the newest, it probably is another one uh, in the back there, and then it grew this one. So this is very low in the pot, and this is above the pot. So that is basically a uh, what we call a climber. It's climbing, uh, climbing out of its pot. Some say that's because the orchid is not happy uh, in the pot, so it's uh, trying to tell you a story. <laughs> you need to do something about it. In some cases, I do agree, but in this case, I don't. If I do see how the orchid is looking, especially with the Miltoniopsis. Uh, looking uh, pretty nice, pretty healthy, and don't mind this older leaf, this yellow leaf, it's really on the oldest bulb, so that's normal that that will uh, go away. I leave it because it's still attached, I don't want to mess up uh, the orchid, so I leave it on until it falls off of its own. But anyhow, um, in this case it's not really the point, it's not a bit a problem, it's just a growing habit uh, of this orchid. So how I deal with it, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think you can see it like yeah. Here I have a top layer of pebbles that I always like to use. That is something that I saw uh, uh, Annabelle do from the orchid room, and I did start to introduce that as well in my orchid collection. And I really like the look of it. I, I have something with pebbles. I like them, 
and uh, they work for me. They uh, basically are, uh, it was um, intended to keep that uh, layer or something around here, that top dry layer, layer what you can have in uh, in cell watering, say in hydroponic, uh, to keep that moist, more moist by putting some pebbles on top so the moist stays in more. But what I nowadays do is I will with a climber, I put it uh, lower so I have my back bulbs in the media and you can imagine if that is too moist and uh, you will probably start to get some um, rot around your uh, bulbs and Miltonias, Miltoniopsis are uh, yeah, known to get the orange rot quite quickly so this would, this would be a beautiful climate for that uh, orange rot but what I do is you cannot see it here but uh, I fill it more up like this level next to the bulb with only pebbles so no pumice, no Cintiq here I have Cintiq and pumice there but I have pebbles here and um, because the pebbles do not hold on to water they, they, they are wet for a little while when you water it around there and then they, then they dry up and that's it they don't wick or anything but pumice does and Cintiq does even more. Cintiq is very wicking. But, uh, so that's why I keep it wet here because we have the roots there. And that is why I only have pebbles around that bulb that is lower in the pot. I will take it out of the pot. So maybe you can see some pebbles but I think I... Uh, I I'm, not, I'm not sure. Let's just let's have a look and go from there. I think that's easier. So we now have that beautiful <laughs> yellow leaf. In the, in the middle of the screen and the bloom so you know it's it's absolutely the same orchid but I just turned it around and it did get it out of the pot because we wanted to have a look on those back bulbs I now gonna zoom in uh, I hope slowly whoops it's something yeah I think this is okay uh, you can see that those are pebbles um, I try to point them out again just to be on the safe side I'm sorry yeah, that's uh, right above my finger are pebbles maybe it's easier if I do it like this we have pebbles here and we have pumice starting there so I should have put a I could have uh, put an, a few more pebbles here but um, yeah I didn't put them more here because that was the bulb and next to the bulb as well but we have some small pumice there but that's okay it probably is low enough, but it is because it's for quite a while in the pot. Let me check this date. Um, yeah, here it is. I, I, I do have the date. I'm sorry. I thought I didn't write down, write down the date. I'm sorry. Can I get it in focus? I should have. Oh, I did zoom in, of course. Yeah, there it is. You can see um, this is the 19th of... August and it was in 19, 2019 so that's uh, over two years back and um, so that's quite long this is uh, by the way I think it's no idea officially but I think it's the where is my camera again it's the Maui mist Miltoniopsis Maui mist Miltoniopsis and it's the second I, that's what is standing here uh, because I had two of them and I probably gave the first one the first division it uh, was one plant but I gave one away anyhow um, so it's in this spot for two years if it was really too wet that's basically what I tried to say I'm sorry guys but um, then it would have rotten off already we can see uh, here there is the bowl I have a big air hole there and some pe pebbles there so it's very airy in in that that area so uh, when I um, have my uh, come on my uh, sometimes words my uh, ventilators I'm sorry there was the word on they blow the air around in this uh, section as well and it's uh, it's basically working I'm really happy with this it's very easy you just uh, basically put them up uh, in a, in a uh, sort of di diagonal uh, shape form let's turn this a little bit so we can have a look yeah we are, oops I'm sorry that was my foot kicking the tripod I'm sorry um, 
this is a nice quite a nice shot because <laughs> those two are going hand in hand when you have beautiful blooms you need uh, roots so uh, yeah we have you can see this one is uh, starting um, uh, making new roots again but it also has beautiful roots inside the pot and it's it's very big pot but in self-watering it doesn't really matter so therefore because it's it's going um, you need to have it uh, moist all the time so it doesn't matter uh, if it's in a, it's in a little bit big pot or in a smaller pot the system is the same so that's the difference there but um, yeah so that's how I deal with uh, the climbers and I have a question about it I think on the Facebook group of Roger Arcades so I thought this is a nice opportunity to talk about it as well because this happens quite a lot in my uh, opinion uh, with the Miltoniopsis. Just another quick shot, a little bit a quick shot, a little bit closer up of the lights. As you can see, they are quite close to those lights. So once again, those are LED lights, cool light. That is a fairly blue light, but um, I also um, have the the luxury to give them uh, some uh, daylight because right to this, uh, next to the shelves, is a uh, very fairly uh, big uh, window. So they will get some daylight, and I think uh, they need it. But I cannot afford so many uh, growing lights. If I could I would definitely uh, have the more uh, suited growing lights. But this works and this is uh, more, um, it's way cheaper basically. That is what it is and I use them for years. And uh, like I said if you can combine it with a little bit of uh, daylight, uh, at least for these guys you should be fine. Then we have another subject and that is feeding. Well, um, maybe it's already on my channel. At this stage, I'm not not sure, and that sounds a little bit strange. But I'm I'm really working on a lot of videos. But I will have a, a video up, a basically a care guide um, on how I fertilize my orchids and which products I uh, products I use. Uh, it's easier for me to make a separate video because this one is already getting quite long and I don't want to have it uh, too long it, it, it needs to be in a sort of reason <laughs> so but what I basically do I will basically do I will talk about the ppm so the parts per million you know, basically then know the amount of sort of fertilizer I give it's the same as uh, with uh, with all my other orchids or the most of them the majority um, and that is in summer it's around 80 to 130 ppms and in winter I slow it down to 50 or 80 uh, parts per million and it also depends if I would grow them for example in in home and they really have yeah we're basically doing nothing once again, uh, like I said in the, in the beginning of this video, if your orchid is not growing or doing nothing, you don't need to feed it. And especially the Miltoniopsis, because like I said, they hate salt build-ups. So you really, really should keep an eye on the salt in your pot. I will discuss, discuss it uh, after this, uh, this part. But uh, So therefore, I, if I have something that is not doing much, let me try slightly adjust the camera. We have a, a look at something that I just had to repot. My Heer Alexander, and it's now two plants. It's those uh, two one in the in the middle of the screen. These guys are used to self watering because I did a basically a repot from uh, re, uh, out of uh, self watering. But still, they they had uh, quite a lot of was happening with them. The repot the separation uh, from one another. Uh, I had two rotting bulbs, so I really need to interfere and if I don't forget I will put a video uh, about this, this story in, in the screen. But uh, these guys do not much feed now. Even though you see there are uh, new growths, I just slow it down. It may take even a month before I start to fill up uh, the reservoir with, with some feeding water again. In the meantime I give them a teeny tiny bit of seaweed, uh, kelp. Uh, I have uh, uh, the brand Biobiz, Algamic, I really like that uh, product, but I give it a little bit, you don't want to overdo it, the hormones, just keep that in mind, but that is, uh, works very well for the root system to keep it going again, in my experience. So that's something uh, you really should keep in mind, and it's basically a basic care guide, if your orchid is not doing much, why should you feed it, why? And 
as promised I would try to show you a example of one that have not the best leaves well at least on some parts of the arcade it's starting to grow way better so don't get me wrong but you see those bended leaves they are there sometimes yes I know but in when I did grow them in home trust me all of those leaves did turn go down they get go up and then whoop they fall over I think that is something, uh, like I said, has to do with the light and light levels. If a star lets your orchid start growing, and thereby using the uh, fertilizer, for example, nitrogen. Uh, if a plant is not growing very well, it gets some nitrogen. But if, if yeah, it's if it doesn't get the nice uh, the, the light it should have, it probably will not work as well. So maybe I did thereby give it too much nitrogen. At this point, it's just a suggestion. I don't say it, it really is, but maybe I did give it a little bit too much in comparison to the light levels, if you get what I mean. If your orchid is getting the right light levels, probably the amount of nitrogen that I give it back then would be suitable, uh, suited, and uh, then it would grow on beautiful uh, leaves. I think something like that. They always go hand in hand. It basically, you can also, maybe you can can... Uh, think about it a little bit different. Uh, it's basically if your orchid is not happy It doesn't do much with the feed in in most cases. I think I hope that makes sense If it doesn't or you want to know more about it just a little side note here, but leave questions in the comments I'm really happy to answer them. So uh, if I was not completely uh, uh, If you didn't probably get the point that I was trying to make and that happens I know I know but <laughs> it's not a problem I'm really happy to go on further but it's for me just to try to to explain it as easy and and, and yeah as easy as I can I um, have saved this one uh, almost for the left this is one of my oldest therefore you can see or thereby you can see this one is quite fairly big in comparison to the other ones this one did survive, and after three years, I had um, one, two. I had another spike, I think. Well, I yeah, I think it has had uh, yeah, it had three spikes on this bulb. Uh, if I I have, I will uh, show you a picture now, but so you know that I'm not lying. But it still has some blooms, but they are going now. So I thought we can talk about how to cut a flower spike. Is maybe it's just something that you would like to know and when to cut it. But this one, after three years, you guys, can you believe it? Poor, poor Argus. I'm so happy, I'm so grateful that she's still here, but... Oi, did I have to learn a lot. Yes, it is what it is, I know, but I felt always so sad for the, for the plants. You're trying your best, you try it, you try it, and the only thing that you see is basically this. You bought it quite happy and oh, there it goes <laughs> and it's dead again so you buy a new, a new one and I hear quite a lot of people that just said I just gave up on them I don't want to grow them anymore well if you really really want to grow them because you like them so much don't give up it is possible trust me it took me at least five years seriously I'm not ashamed anymore about it but I, I promise you guys, five years, and and uh, that I really seriously try to find what was happening with my orchid and how how do uh, could I adjust this uh, orchid to growing in my my uh, area. Yeah, five years is long, you guys. I know, but this one um, did survive the last three of them, so uh, that's uh, kind of fun, I think, and I'm really happy about it. Uh, I don't try not to think about it as much, but I. Um, I'm, uh, that's basically what I'm trying to say. Don't give up because I'm happy, so happy now that I didn't. I now find a way that really suits me. It may not suit you. You may think, oh my God, what is, what is he doing? I will not do that. That's perfectly fine. It's just how I do it. Um, and you see here is a uh, bloom. Obviously, it's gone. I will zoom in a little bit. Let's, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm going to focus on this spike. It's a bit easier. So we have some blooms left, but you probably can see it starts to uh, get brown around the, the lip, some edges. And this one has it here with, next to my thumb. Uh, you can see a brown spot there as well. So if you have some uh, good blooms left or you want to enjoy them even a bit longer, 
obviously you don't cut a spike uh, around here but uh, what you could do in that case is just uh, grab a scissors uh, and just cut that bloom off and now you can see it really does show up uh, way more uh, nicer obviously than you when you have something brown <laughs> brown and degraying on your on your blooms so that's basically what you can do it uh, that's that's something uh, yeah especially I can imagine when you're growing them, them in, indoors and you get some visitors and you want to have your plants looking their best obviously because you tried so hard <laughs> Some people do it uh, try for five years to get them to rebloom. You want to show them as long as you can, I can imagine. Uh, funny thing that I imagine that because I also am now going to cut a spike because these guys are, are pretty over. And, and um, I also have some new spikes in the, in the back. I will show you. So I will have some new blooms there. But just to show it, normally I do wait a little bit longer uh, just when I see the spike yellowing up. And uh, sometimes I forget about them and all the blooms are dropped al already and then even the spike most of the times is even almost like woody it feels almost like wood um, that's okay as well so I don't normally if, if it's green I let it on but just on purposes for this video I just pull it out of this um, leaf and I see that this leaf I just need to turn it a little bit it's a little hard to see I think I Apologize. I think now we are uh, in screen again, but I uh, just take it out of the the brick, basically, is called it, and then you have a sort of eye here on the point of my scissors, and my pinky is in a way. I hope you can see that. This is the, I do basically what I do with a phenoliopsis. I cut just above uh, that first eye. I hope you can see it one clean cut and that should do the trick and now we have some beautiful blooms but they uh, like i said going over uh, almost already so it doesn't matter but that is how you how at least how i uh, cut my flower spikes from the meltoniopsis i do it i'm sorry i'm sorry i want to go this way i do it like that because they say i'm not not completely sure but they say if you cut it above an eye it seals itself so you now basically created a wound on that flower spike, but cut it above an eye and that eye will seal off the spike. I cannot say if it's true, I, I really can't. I, I shouldn't know how to measure that or, or how to know sure it works. But they say it and quite a lot of them uh, do, so thereby I think uh, it's... it's it Basically, I wouldn't be surprised if it really works. Let me put it like that and otherwise it doesn't matter that much. I want the spike uh, at some point to be gone as anyhow. So therefore I just cut it and you don't see much left of the spike. If I open it up this leaf and I basically stuck my nose in it, I probably see a little bit left there, but that's it. So that's how I do it. And I see something here. I, I didn't notice that. So it already had three spikes and it starts it's a very little spike it's only only one bud there it's a bit of strain but still it's, it's trying to bloom for me um, we have at least another two spikes we have one here with three buds on it and also have one here also with three buds hope you can see it we have a beautiful new growth here um, so I think, uh, yeah, I will ha at least have a few more blooms, but maybe they will follow on when this is uh, when it's, uh, finished blooming. Maybe this new growth will start blooming. That would be fantastic. That way I can have it in bloom for quite some months. But I also and I just wanted to give you a quick uh, update on the root system. Uh, we have some a bit more brown roots that... Some will probably be dead, but some probably will be still working. That was to be expected because, like I said, this is a, a bit of an older Miltoniopsis in my uh, in my uh, collection. And once, sometimes at a certain time, those roots will die off. But if it happens on fairly new ones, yes, that would uh, be an indication of a problem. But they uh, they uh, like to uh, regrow their root systems. Uh, from time to time and they like to branch as well as you can see but I think I, I can say that this one has a pretty 
good root system and as you see in the pot I see a lot of beautiful white roots fairly new roots going in a pot we have I'm sorry even a new one there and a one there starting above my finger so I'm really really happy with this and we have roots here quite a lot of them and this one is spotted in pumice maybe you recognize it already where's that leaf this is the leaf and also Cintiq that's the black stuff and I have a layer of Lekka uh, on the bottom and because I have quite a lot of Lekka laying around I, I use it but I do not like and I even have some uh, ceramics in there those are those little orange pieces but um, both of them I do not like and I will not rebuy them because the pumice and the Cintiq together is a beautiful combination for a Miltoniopsis I have the best successes with uh, with that combination so what I would have done now I would have a few bigger pieces of pumice on the bottom, a bottom layer so that when I put a smaller pumice in it will not fall out of the pot because the, you, as you know in orchids and this one has even more but there are always some holes down uh, down in the pot I just use a regular uh, pots for my self watering orchid pots so that small media will fall out and therefore I have a, a little layer of Aleka and some ceramics so uh, we did discuss quite a lot of uh, very important points but for me for this system and I will have a link uh, about it uh, in this video as well because it's a very very important one uh, I'm going over my self watering system I call it myself uh, my customized self watering system if you really want to know about the, what is going on in the reservoirs how I do my self watering without flushing because that's that's what I'm doing I don't floss my pots only if it really 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 is necessary like when they have too much salts going on so on occasion but these guys who are now blooming I didn't flush for at least one and a half year you guys I seriously didn't that may sound um, strange maybe you think oh my god what is he doing I think I now know what I'm doing so therefore I made my video about my, my customized self watering system this is what one thing that obviously it works for me look at the blooms and I think I can say my Miltoniopsis are looking quite healthy are getting there um, so I need to keep uh, going uh, going yeah going on with this system this works for me and obviously, uh, obviously I think for my plants otherwise I think I wouldn't have that many blooms and uh, we just did uh, have a look at this one uh, like like we saw it it makes several new spikes again uh, so yeah, I, th I think I can say that they uh, they are happy, um, and that's why I really wanted to point point out all of those things because I can talk about my customized self watering system and a little bit about feed and the light and that's it, but all those factors, especially with the Miltoniopsis, are important. There's not one that is the most important. If you ask me, the only thing basically is never put them in direct sunlight if you do that you will lose your plant or it will so this is one overview here in my orchid room about the Miltoniopsis and I just wanted to say thank you so so much if you made it this far especially thank you so much if you grow uh, Miltoniopsis yourself and you're thinking oh I would like to share my care I would really appreciate it because I think we cannot have enough videos about the Miltoniopsis I know prefer, personal pre preference there, but uh, still, uh, you are really uh, welcome to join in on these care collabs. You can leave a comment under my video or on the other co collaborators, and uh, we will get in touch with you and uh, have you in on the next update on them. And yeah, like I said, that's that's it for now. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Uh, I really, really appreciate it and. Uh, I promise you guys I will share as much information as I can about growing my orchids because that is how I learned and that is how I found this customized self-watering system my, my yeah I basically adjust a few things and it really suits me and I like to share it for who wants to know so one more time I say thank you and I hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye